I have made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Oh lord, this is a lot of books. Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be showing you all of the retellings I own. It's no secret that I am a fan of a retelling. It's one of the things that just instantly draws my attention in a book and so I have a lot of them. So this is going to be a whistle stop tour of all of the ones that I own. And I do mean a whistle stop tour because there are over 70 books here. There may even be 80 at this point because I counted and then just kept finding more. So I'm not sure how many are on here, but I can say it's a lot. <laughs> so a few things about this video before we get into it. The books in this video are just the ones that I own physically, so this doesn't include anything that I've got on my Kindle. However, I did just recently do a video showing all of the books that I haven't read that are on my Kindle, and there are a few in there, so if you are interested in that, I will leave a link to that down below. It also doesn't include anything that I've previously read and unhauled or read in another format. These are just the ones which are quite literally on my shelves and that I've picked off to show you guys. As well as that, I have had to give myself some kind of guideline to what's included and what's not. So when I say retellings, I mean the sort of books where you can pinpoint a specific story that has been retold. I will say right now that I do not mean any of the kind of collections that you can get because I do have a mythology and folklore collection and one thing that always comes up is Stephen Fry's Mythos for instance. Those sorts of books will not be included in these videos because I do mean the sort of books which are like fantasy books taking a story and making a new one out of it. I do however have a video on my mythology and folklore collection for those types of books if you are interested in those again I will leave a link to them down below. As well as that, because so many books are described as being inspired by mythology or folklore, I do also have a set of books which don't necessarily retell a specific story, so I do have a separate stack for those which I have included in this video because I know that some of those would definitely come up in the comments if I didn't include them. So, that being said, I do have three different stacks of books. So I have the ones which are inspired by mythology, I have the ones which are direct retellings, and then I have also separated my Greek myth ones because there's a lot of them. The Greek myth retelling section alone is just as tall as the rest of them. <laughs> Now again, when it comes to the Greek myth retellings, if you are interested in some of these books specifically, I have recently done a video about the Greek myth retellings that are still on my TBR, so the ones that I haven't read from the stack. So if you are interested in a further look into those, again, I will leave that video down in the description box. But after that long babble of an introduction, let's get into it. So starting with the Greek mythology stack, we have otherwise five myths of transformation retold in verse through the voices of women. The subtitle of this pretty much says it all. It is a really short poetry collection that I read pretty recently. Quite enjoyed it, even though poetry isn't necessarily my thing, but I would definitely recommend it if it is your thing. And in this book, we have retellings of Ariadne, Psyche, Cassandra, Persephone, and Eurydice. Wait by Jeanette Winterson, which is a retelling of Heracles and Atlas. It's a really small book and one of my favorites. The Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood, which is probably one of the most famous Greek myth retellings, and retells the story of the Odyssey, but from Penelope's perspective, who is Odysseus' wife. Great Goddesses by Nikita Gill, which is again a series of poems, which as it says on the front, is a life lesson from myths and monsters. Lifestyles of Gods and Monsters, which is said to be a Hunger Games meets Greek mythology, and retells the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. A Touch of Gold by Annie Sullivan, which is a YA fantasy that retells the story of King Midas and follows his daughter. Guild by Raven Kennedy, which again retells the story of King Midas, but this one is a fantasy romance. A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair, which is a Hades and Persephone retelling, urban fantasy romance. A Deal with the Elf King by Elise Cover, which is a combination of Greek myth retelling because it retells the story of Hades and Persephone, but also Beauty and the Beast. Tempting Hades, which is another Hades and Persephone retelling and again a fantasy romance. Song of Sacrifice by Janelle Rhiannon, which retells the story of the Trojan War, but from the women's perspective. The King Must Die by Mary Renault, which retells the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. Till We Have Faces by C.S. Lewis, which retells a Cupid and Psyche story. Medea by Krista Wolf, which is a modern retelling of Medea. Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, which again is a retelling of the Theseus and the Minotaur story, but from Ariadne's perspective. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which is a retelling of the Trojan War story, but from Achilles and Patroclus' perspectives. Law by Alexandra Bracken, which I wouldn't say is a direct retelling, but it's sold that way. This one takes inspiration from many different stories. We do, of course, have Rick Riordan with the Percy Jackson series and the Heroes of Olympus series. I don't know why I pulled out The Blood of Olympus when that's one of the list books in the series, but whatever. <laughs> Wake Siren by Nina McLaughlin, which is actually a retelling of 
Ovid's Metamorphoses and many stories from that, which is more considered Roman than it is Greek, so ancient mythology, we'll go forward with this one. The Lost Books of the Odyssey by Zachary Mason, which is inspired by the Odyssey. Oh My Gods by Alexandra Shepard, which follows in Rick Ryden's lead by taking just a general idea of the Greek gods as parents and retelling the stories that way. How high can the stat get? We have A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, which is one of my favourite retellings. This one, again, is a story of the Trojan War, but from the women's perspective. And Natalie Haynes does also have The Children of Jocasta, which is the story of Oedipus and Antigone. The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker, which does actually have a sequel coming out this year. This one, again, retells the story of the Trojan War. It was sold as being a retelling from the women's perspective, but I think that's a bit inaccurate, so I do just generally say it's a retelling. This is now taller than me. <laughs> We do, of course, have Circe by Madeline Miller, which retells the story of Circe, who is a character who isn't seen too much, but is within the Odyssey. And finally, for the Greek myth retellings, we have Cassandra, again, by Krista Wolf, which retells the story of Cassandra, who is a prophet. <laughs> I'm going to take those down before they topple over me. Um, BRB. Continuing on with the direct retellings, I do actually have a couple which aren't like the rest, because these ones are retellings of classical books, basically. But I knew that if I didn't mention them in this video, people would comment, so I just thought I would very quickly mention them. Because these ones are, of course, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet, set in 1920s at Shanghai. And we do also have The Court of Miracles, which is a Lamer's retelling, and was absolutely everywhere towards the end of last year, so I am very intrigued about it. One which comes out in October of this year is Midnight in Everwood by Maria Kuznia. This one is a retelling of The Nutcracker, which is written down and is considered a fairy tale as well as the ballet. <laughs> We do also have Grendel by John Gardner, Grendel being a monster from Anglo-Saxon legend. A recent addition to my shelves is Orphea by Joanne M. Harris, which is inspired by the child ballads. I then have a small collection of anthologies of retellings by loads of different authors, starting with The Little Book of Fairy Tales, published by Dancing Bear Books. We also have Mythic Journeys, Retold Myths and Legends, edited by Paula Garan. This one includes myths from all different cultures. Loving Colour by Balu Babalola. Mythic Tales from Around the World, Retold. I believe this is more of a contemporary take on myth retellings though. We also have Hag, Forgotten Folk Tales Retold, XO Orpheus, 50 New Myths, edited by Kate Bernheimer, and this one again has a whole host of retellings from different cultures. My Mother She Killed Me, My Father He Ate Me, again edited by Kate Bernheimer, and this one is specifically fairy tale retellings. Moving away from anthologies and onto a few which you most definitely will have heard of, we do of course have A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mars, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but does also feature inspirations from other stories such as the story of Tamlin. The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which is a retelling of the St. George and the Dragon story, but does also have inspiration from Japanese mythology and such inside too. And if you didn't know, The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon is technically a Greek myth retelling. She has confirmed that it is a retelling of the Prometheus and Pandora myth. However, you don't see this until later in the series. However, what you do see is many references to Greek mythology within the series. 100 Nights of Hero, which is this huge graphic novel inspired by the 1001 Arabian Nights story, and it does also feature retelling or fairy tales within the stories in this book. Another really famous one is The Bloody Chamber and Other Stories by Angela Carter. The Bloody Chamber being a retelling of Bluebeard, but there are also other retellings within the story collection. The Marrow Thieves by Cherie Dimmeline, which is a retelling of a Meta's Legend. Daughter of the Forest by Juliet Rillier, which is a retelling of the Seventh Son of the Seventh Son myth. And also something about a Swan, which I cannot remember the name of right now. And it is also inspired by Celtic folklore as well. There's quite a few different stories that mix into this one. I should also mention that Juliet Rillier's stories are very heavily inspired by Celtic folklore. All of her books would probably be relevant to this list, but this is the one which does have a direct retelling aspect to it. Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm, which is a Beauty and the Beast fantasy romance. Pretty much all of Emma Hamm's books are retellings, and with this series in particular, you do have different retellings for each and every book, so... While this one is Beauty and the Beast, you do also have things like The Little Mermaid, for instance, later in the series. The Brown the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which is a retelling of Russian folklore. I think the story specifically is called Vasilisa the Brave. Uprooted by Naomi Novik, which most people say is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but I think there is actually a specific story called Agnieszka and the Yellow Cow. I think it's called, which is what this book is partially inspired by. And of course we do also have Spin and Silver by Naomi Novik, which is a retelling of Rumpelstiltskin. We have a couple from Irish author Deirdre Sullivan, one being Tangleweed and Brine, which is a retelling of many different fairy tales, but we do also have Savage Her Reply, which is a retelling specifically of an Irish fairy tale, which I think is pronounced Children of Lear. 
Nottingham by Nathan McCarrick, which is a retelling of Robin Hood and also Maid Marian. Dark and Deepish Red by Anne Marie McLemore, which is a retelling of The Red Shoes, which is a lesser known fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron, which is quite evidently a retelling of Cinderella. The Raven and the Reindeer by T. Kingfisher, which is a retelling of The Snow Queen, and I absolutely love this one, it's really tiny, highly recommend. House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig, which is a retelling of the Twelve Dancing Princesses fairy tale. Sister Song by Lucy Holland, which is a retelling of the Two Sisters folk ballad. And finally, for the direct retellings, we do have A Malice by Heather Walter, which is a sapphic retelling of Sleeping Beauty. So then finally, we are onto the stack of books, which are advertised as being inspired by mythology or folklore. So again, these ones might not feature a specific story that they are directly retelling, but they are featuring a lot of elements from within that mythology or folklore. First up we have Kingdom of Souls by Rena Baron, this one being a West African inspired fantasy, and also one of my favourite books, A Wolf for a Spell by Kara Sutton, which is a middle grade featuring Baba Yaga from Russian folklore, which is Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart, which is a Jamaican inspired fantasy. Coming out in April, so I've no doubt you'll be seeing this one around a lot soon. We have a few more which are inspired by West African mythology, including The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna, A Song of Race and Ruin by Rosanna Brown, and also Ray Bear by Jordan Ifweka. We also have City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty which is inspired by Middle Eastern or specifically Islamic mythology. A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher which is apparently heavily inspired by Greek mythology. We have the series of books by Sophie Anderson which is inspired by Russian folklore, the first one being The House with Chicken Legs. Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia which is inspired by pre-Hispanic mythology. Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer which is inspired by Celtic folklore. The Furies by Katie Lowe, which I put hesitantly on this list, but it is inspired by Greek mythology in the sense that it's a dark academia and they have more like mythical relations than some dark academia books do in terms of their references to it, so I thought I would just throw this one in too. Star Daughter by Shveta Thrakar, which is inspired by Indian myth. Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh, which is a tiny novella inspired by the myth of the Green Man. Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Borshadust, which retells the story of a Persian epic. The Ren Hunt by Mary Watson, which is inspired by Celtic folklore. Gummy Ho or Wicked Fox by Kacho, which is inspired by Korean mythology. And finally, we have The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed, inspired by Jewish mythology. But those are all the retellings of books that are inspired by mythology and folklore, fairy tales, etc., that are currently on my bookshelves just a few of them. Let me know if you're a fan of retellings and what particular type, like do you steer more towards fairy tale retellings, specific mythologies, do you like it when they are direct retellings and you can see the story parallel in the original one, or do you prefer to see fantasy worlds which are just heavily inspired by the mythology? And of course let me know if you spotted any favourites within this video. But for now I shall be ending this video here, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to the videos that I've mentioned. Not the books because there will be too many but I will have my general affiliate links down there anyway. All of my social media and other bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already but for now I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!